Prabhu ka ichha hai to Mr. Nusli and myself will be going to Naveen's wedding. Tuesday we will be traveling and uh, pray for uh, this marriage. And as Naveen said, both the sides all are uh, Hindus. That may not be any uh, problem. God may overrule all situations. <clears throat> Yesterday I heard a message in that uh, that man said about a survey which took place in America. Udar kuch sawal in pucha dogongo. America is a Christian nation. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the questions were, which are the four Gospels? You may not believe 50% of the Christian did know what are the four Gospels. Eh? What are the four Gospels? Oh, okay. <laughs> Do not... Okay. Say Okay. Second question was, uh, how many disciples Jesus had, apostles, and what were their names? How many were they? One. And uh, the names were asked, hardly people could say three names. Most of these people are uh, regular church goers. They are part of big revival churches. But they have no knowledge about that. Okay, that was another question. This is a tricky question. Okay, I'll listen very carefully. <clears throat> How many commandments are there in Ten Commandments? Ten. Eh? Ten. Ten? Sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 so when when the, there the question was, uh, what are the ten commandments? And the fifty percent of the people <coughs> are, were not able to say what are the commandments. Okay, so that is another thing. I am leaving with you. The, you need to know this simple, basic Bible knowledge. Okay, then. Uh, As the what is the connection between Sodom and Gomorrah? That was another question. What is the connection? Rachel, what is the connection between Sodom and Gomorrah? Nobody knows. Eh? Sin, sin. No, two cities destroyed together. That's all. So the Mamora. Okay. Two cities destroyed together. That's all. You know, in America, what is the answer people gave? Husband and wife. Okay. See, these are the how sad it is. How sad it is. People will be jumping and dancing and falling down and rolling and barking and laughing. Everything, but you know, zero Bible knowledge. Okay, I'm not saying Kerala's uh, chief secretary just retired, Gigi Thompson was preaching, and all those who understand Malayalam go to the YouTube and hear. He is firing the bishops, all the names associated with them, and the lifestyle. Huh? And uh, traveling in the most uh, luxurious cars. And what kind of shepherds you are, he is asking. Okay, you listen to that. It's a wonderful message. He is a uh, orthodox man. But you know, I am amazed at his Bible knowledge. Okay. Then, uh, who preached the Sermon on the Mount? That was another question. You know what are people gave the answer? Who preached the sermon on the 
Jesus, where? Eh? Sunday are in the Old Testament. Eh? You are a Sunday school teacher. You say. Five, six answers. Very good. <laughs> you know what the uh, American people gave the answer? Billy Graham. Who preached the sermon on the mount? They gave the answer Billy Graham. Okay. They never heard the sermon on the mount. So, so DJ Thompson was uh, telling people, what do you know about this book? Okay. So that is uh, just to say how ignorant people are. So today I am going to say a few things from the book of uh, Jonah. <clears throat> but uh, before I go to the book, I want to ask you some questions. <coughs> How many questions? Okay. Don't look into the Bible. Okay. And even if you look also, I have no problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> How many questions? Jonah was asked by the, uh, the sailors or uh, the ship people, okay, captain and his associate. They went to him and asked uh, some questions. How many questions? Four. 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 Okay. Four. Four. Okay. Four. 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 Some more English. No, okay. Let me say why. Okay. Let us see how many. <clears throat> Verse 6. First question. What do you mean sleeper? Okay. What do you mean sleeper? Then said, arise, call your God. Perhaps your God will consider us. Okay. What do you mean sleeper? That's the first question. Then was 8. For who, whose cause this trouble is upon us? Second question. Third, what is your occupation? Third question. Fourth, where do you come from? Fifth question, what is your country? And uh, of what people are you? Then uh, verse 10. Why have you done this? Then... Uh, Verse 11, then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may become? Eh? Any more question? Verse 6, how can you see? Eh? Yeah, that's the question. Your version is different. Okay. So how many questions? Eight. Eh? Eight. Ah, eight questions. Okay. So what uh, God asked a question, God asked some questions to Jonah. What are the questions God asked, since you know it very well? God asked him some questions. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. Why you are angry? Is it right to be angry? Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. See, the book ends with a question. I think this is the only book in the Bible ends with a question. Okay. You can check it afterwards. One more. Okay. Now, okay. I had a little doubt. Okay. Uh, listen this. Okay. Uh, so, that question is, God says, you are concerned about a small plant. For which you did not do anything. Should I not be concerned about this 1,20,000 people? So now the question is, how many people were there in uh, Nineveh? 1,500. 1, you are not sitting here. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000. 1,20,000.
okay what all these people did that uh, linson asked uh, what all these uh, uh, mariners these are people who are in the ship they did what all they did was why they were afraid they cried out to their own gods they threw the cargo okay then uh, they went to jona and they came up then they cast lots then they prayed to god and uh, they cast uh, uh, jona into the sea and uh, these are all the different things the the uh, the ship people have done okay so what is the first thing they did they were afraid every man cried out to his own god <clears throat> i heard about the story it's very interesting so when i was you know walking on the road i was you know preparing my message also okay? then suddenly this story came to my mind i was laughing like this you know some people were looking at me a man is walking on the street and you laughing and then the people will misunderstand us you know i am sure that those people have misunderstood me but uh, this story made me to laugh so much <clears throat> the story is uh, one plane was caught in the air pocket air pocket eh turbulence turbulence you know air pocket suddenly the flight will be brought so much down you know it will shake like this and all okay so people are terribly afraid the pilot said it's going to continue for long time okay seat belt was all tight and you know people were uh, panic then they understood in that plane there was a preacher so people you know cried to that preacher said preacher preacher do something okay then this man said come on let us take an offering <laughs> <laughs> you may have collected that day lot of money you know some people are all the time thing like that okay anyway this people you know they threw away all the cargo and you know suffered big loss and all okay one more question okay jona made a confession here in this book what is that confession not in the prayer he made a, another confession did he make any confession okay yeah. eh? yeah that is all right chapter 1 verse 12 one was for i know that this great tempest is because of me okay i am the reason for all this problem okay. when some problem happens you know i heard about a meeting in kerala and uh, somehow you know in that meeting the preacher was unable to preach so that finally he felt in his mind like this probably the holy spirit put it there. there is somebody who is sitting there living in great sin so finally he shouted out he said what is going wrong here is somebody is sitting here living in sin then uh, finally anyway the atmosphere was so such that man said as yes, i am the man okay see to own uh, the responsibility of a uh, such situation is not an easy thing jona was ready to accept that okay now you know 
I do Bible studies without opening Bible. Okay, without opening Bible, I do Bible studies. You can think about uh, Jonah, and uh, I know what is each chapter. Okay, then Philippians. I sometimes I do that. What is there in these four chapters of Philippians? Then you know, go to Genesis and Abraham, and we can study about Moses. We can study a few things about Joshua without opening the Bible. You know, you can just simply lay down, and you can do Bible studies. Okay, that's a good practice. I tell you, many of my messages I prepare when I rest. Okay, I might have did all the preparations and uh, wrote down my notes and all. But when I just you know simply lay down, I try to you know prepare myself again uh, to preach that message. Okay. So without uh, looking into the Bible, I just do want to say what are there in this four chapters. Okay. And this uh, division can help you greatly. Okay. First one, a disobedient prophet. running away from god running away from god and punished chapter 1 a disobedient prophet running away from god and punished and you should remember that that is there in that one chapter a disobedient prophet running away from god and punished anatna gali ek prabodak प्रभु से भागता है और उसको दंड मिला ये है बस सेकंड चैप्टर ए प्रेइंग प्रॉफिट रनिंग बैक टू गॉड एंड डिलीवर ए प्रेइंग प्रॉफिट रनिंग बैक टू गॉड एंड डिलीवर चैप्टर टू प्रार्थना करने वाला एक प्रबोधक ईश्वर के पास वापस दौड़ के आया और ईश्वर उनको बचा third chapter a faithful prophet running with god and his reward ek vishwas ho gaya prabodak ishwar ke saath daudta hai aur uska pradival paya chapter 4 an angry prophet running ahead of god and rebuked gussa wala ek prabodak ईश्वर से ईश्वर से रनिंग है इसको क्या बोले हाँ ईश्वर के आगे भागते हैं और उसको ईश्वर ने डाटा ओके इसलिए चार चार करते ओके और एक रीति में ये चार अध्याय पढ़ सकता है फर्स्ट चैप्टर जोना इन द शिप जोना इन द शिप Chapter two, Jonah in fish belly. Okay. Chapter three, Jonah in Nineveh. Chapter four, Jonah outside Nineveh city. Outside Nineveh. Okay. These four things we can. Uh, again, we can say chapter one disobedience of Jonah. Then chapter two deliverance of Jonah. then uh, third uh, declaration of jona preaching then uh, displeasure of jona okay so you can all do like this okay you can just you know pick up words and you know see what is there in each chapter now i am going to bring jona before you this man is going to say something to each one of us okay some uh, lessons he learned he wants to teach us So after reading the book of Jonah, if we don't hear what Jonah wants to tell us, you didn't get anything. Okay. So what is the first thing? What he wants to tell us, chapter one, when a very clear commandment is there, be careful. Okay. Not to disobey, but to obey. When a very clear commandment is given, 
I know what is God's will for me. I should agree with God's will for me. I should not disobey God's command. So that's the first thing. Chapter one, he wants to tell us: Don't uh, disobey God when you know what is God's plan for you. When God is directing you in a particular direction. whatever is the price you have to pay be ready to go according to the commandment of god that is what jonah wants to teach us okay that's very important we need to know what is god's will for us and we need to accept that will hmm? and uh, often you know human will and uh, god's will clash each other okay we will insist i want this way i want this way is just like you know some children uh, when they are small uh, they will cry, cry for that uh, father's razor okay then uh, give me also let me also do the shaving okay and uh, finally the father because he is rolling on the ground beating the chest and all you know finally that father will give one what that fellow will do he will just uh, instead of the beard he will shave off the skin okay then we will learn so don't uh, go against the will of god god has a plan for each of our lives how important it is to realize what is god's plan for me okay that's the lesson number 1 jona wants to teach us secondly pray to god as early as possible pray to god or return to god as early as possible you think say no i have written here years before better to pray in the right place than praying in the wrong place okay better to pray in the right place than praying in the wrong place galat jagah mein prarthana karne se acha hai sahi jagah mein prarthana kar okay that is one number one better to pray in the wrong place than not praying at all okay better to pray in the wrong place than not praying at all second thing okay uh, different uh, prayers we will uh, see afterwards okay um, how important for us to pray the salvation prayer before a person leave this world okay salvation prayer. that we will see later when i come to this chapter 2 so jona is teaching us pray to god as early as possible okay you landed in the wrong <laughs> but still there is hope still you can pray you know you know jonas prayer we read that god heard his prayer okay then god commanded the fish to go and vomit him at the shore of nineveh okay and uh, Jona prayed from fish belly. Wow, how many barriers are there? Okay. How this prayer can reach heaven? Okay. Barrier number one: fish body. Eh? How big that fish was? Just imagine. Then secondly, barrier number two: what is that? Waters. Waters. Okay. How deep? the fish is swimming carrying him okay barrier number 2 uh, barrier number 3 near the third barrier other animals in the sea oh, no atmosphere atmosphere yeah atmosphere that is barrier number 
<laughs> other uh, barriers you know you can just uh, think at least uh, this many any other yeah that all will come in the atmosphere everything will come okay so his prayer crossed all these barriers and reach in the presence of god now how powerful prayer is we all you know think that you know prayer is something you know uh when uh, evening time when we return from the hobbies you know just say thank you lord that's a big thing at least you know that's a big thing okay uh, that is all prayer is no more than that we need to know prayer is very powerful it can go directly to heaven and it can bring the result i think there is a song we teach children uh prayer goes up ashish lege niche aata hai okay prarthana upar jata hai ashish lege niche aata hai okay i hear uh, jona is the greatest example you can pray from any distance whatever is the barrier the paul prayed from the prison okay and uh, Acts, uh, Acts chapter sixteen, and there was an earthquake. Okay, then uh, prison was opened, and finally they were released. All those things are prayer is powerful. Peter was in prison. The church prayed for him continuously, continuously. Peter was sleeping in the prison. What the church was doing? eh where it is written eh three or four four okay all what i wanted to know, say is peter was praying so sorry sleeping the church was praying and as a result the prison was opened the angel went inside and brought him out delivered for so what i want to emphasize is prayer is powerful as i mentioned you know several times all cannot preach but all can pray improve your prayer life start using scriptures in your prayer life. use some of these promises in the word of god and use it in your faith now in your prayer जब प्रार्थना करते समय में ईश्वर का कुछ वायदा है आप पकड़ना है उसको ईश्वर के सामने बोलना है ये आप मेरा स्वर्गीय पिता का वायदा है ये मेरे जीवन में पूरा सो दैट इज सेकंड थिंग दिस जोना वांट्स टू टीच अस व्हाट इज दैट प्रे टू गॉड आस अर्ली एस पॉसिबल There is a beautiful verse in Psalm thirty-two, verse six. Psalm thirty-two, six. When God can be found, am I right? For in for this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to God. in a time when you may be found there is a time god can be found afterwards what god will say when you really wanted to find me when i was available you are not interested i am also not interested okay god will say so there is a time no i was you know thinking how to defeat satan okay defeat set and uh, sometimes uh, four o'clock in the morning my sleep is gone okay i want to uh, you know lie on the bed but you know there is a debate in my mind will you pray or will you lie down satan <coughs> will say you lie down what the spirit of god will say you pray who will you listen i tell you many nights i do that sometimes satan try to defeat me oh you rest 
you another two more hours or three more hours you rest properly you go to sleep again but the spirit of god will say no this is time for prayer now i want to tell you something now i am praying for 12 girls okay six girls are sitting here hmm? every day i pray for six girls 1 2 3 4 5 where is the six eh hey? ah don <laughs> i pray very seriously for the, these six girls then three are in uh, mandabad three are in uh, uh, no nigara there is a special reason for praying okay these children are all growing up they have to get the appropriate life partners in their life otherwise life will be ruined i tell you so one day billigram took his three daughters and uh, they went for an outing so those days you know uh, probably some 60 70 years before uh, parents will not say these things to the children then billy graham said to his uh, daughters one of the most important thing one of the most important things in your life is to pray for your future life partners so these girls that time they thought you know what is wrong with that now today eh? we are so young we are 11 years or 9 years or uh, now probably the elder one was 13 years three girls okay so this is one billigram's daughter said one of the daughters said that time we thought what they what our daddy is talking and they said you know after they grew up they understood today they understand it better they are mothers and grandmothers they understand it better they are all spiritual leaders they give guidance to people they understand what i want to say is there is a right time when we can find god we god is available go to him and uh, be in the presence of god start praying i encourage all the parents do that more than planning and you know more than all making all this uh, you know a uh, future planning start praying god will do wonders in your life and you girls also i encourage you all to pray very seriously about your not only this marriage even your further studies and your job and other things everything you can uh, start praying and god will help you tremendously okay so that's the second thing jona wants to teach us third rectify things as early as and cooperate with god as much as you can that is chapter 3 okay you made a mistake that is not the end no this chapter 3 how it starts like this what is this? how it starts now the word of the lord came to jona the second time if this did not happen this book would not have been there god suppose he thought like this now this man you know disobeyed me ran against ran in the wrong direction i don't want him i don't care for him let him do what he wants i will find out another person i can prepare another person and if it happened so then the book of john would, would not have been there praise god god gave second chance and here john wants to tell us rectify things and cooperate with god as much as you can be available to him forget about all what happened in the past aiming at the future be available to god that is what jona wants to teach us in the chapter 3 chapter 
feel the pain and the pressure of god's heart okay don't try to teach god don't become over smart than god okay don't take bible classes to god huh he wanted to teach god so when uh, finally god asked him this question verse 10 and 11 you had pity on the plan for which you have not labored nor made it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night and should i not pity nineveh the great city which are more than 120000 person 1 lakh 20000 people right you did not do anything for this plant to grow but when it perished you are so much worried and concerned about it and these people who are created by me they are people with my image they are precious souls should not i be concerned about it? so feel the pressure and the pain of god's heart you know when we uh, thought of you know returning to ahmedabad and they continuing here many things happen so while we were in kerala one of the things after buying that uh, house and land i planted uh, wonders and coconut trees and it was all growing very well you know very costly plants 250 200 300 rupees for one tiny plant we watered you know fertilized it started growing very well you know neighbors were also uh, jealous of it they were also you it got growing very fast so big it is and i boasted like this you know what i boasted after two years i don't have to buy coconuts Eh? within 3 years time this will give uh you know i start uh, giving fruits okay and uh, so i had you know all the time i was looking at this trees okay very soon it will flower and it will uh, bring uh, seeds and next uh, year i don't have to buy coconut and all this plant then what happened you know god sent a particular insect eh malayalam it is called chelli uh, its name in english is uh, i forgot anyway uh, one uh, particular insect uh, they started coming and you know getting into the very uh, what is it the top of that plant okay then uh, they will destroy the plant completely okay that i tell you first day was time when i saw that one of the biggest trees completely got perished it was a very painful okay very painful it was not like donna i planted i watered i devoured all these things were there but you know that time god was telling me you are concerned about this plant okay but i am concerned about people i want souls to be saved i want people to know me you are a person who can do that i didn't prepare you for uh, these things then in addition god asked me how many coconuts you need in a year okay don't you think that i can provide that should you work and finally one tree gave lot of coconuts when we saw it one side you know coconuts are coming and the top got destroyed and that also perished that time my reaction was you know my neighbor said you know oh how sad it is you know you spend lot of money and you know then see what happen what to do and i said i have no problem <laughs> i could accept it very coolly that time because by the time god prepared 
but i want to say god is more concerned about souls how many of us are serious no no every sunday we come here break bread sing songs and you know spend time together that's all fine but more than that we need to see that souls are getting saved god is interested in human beings god says i know how many people are in nineveh city i am concerned about them i care for them i don't want them to perish that is what god is saying so that is uh, what uh, jona wants to teach us okay but today i am not going to enter into this book uh one or two things i will mention briefly and uh, close first of all jona is uh, okay according to aramudan second book starts uh, sorry ends with a question that is important okay then uh, secondly jona was a historical person it is not allegory it is not you know imagination how do we know it is historical it means mentioned in scripture uh, yeah when the lord jesus was uh, talking about his death he connected it with the jonas life okay as jona was in the belly of the fish Three days and three nights, the Son of Man will be under the earth. Three days and three nights. So Jesus said, "Okay, that is the second thing about it." Then thirdly, this is very important. Jonah is a very honest man. You agree with me? He was ready to say what exactly happened, and people will hide. You know all those. You know. uh what is it failures and mistakes and you know they will bring to us only the bright side jona is not like that he said what blunders he committed hard what mistakes he made how foolish he was how foolishly he tried to run away from god he was ready to say all the mistakes which happened in no god has no problem with dealing with people who make mistake that is another important thing god is not after perfect people you know very often i when i talk to people you know especially when it uh, coming to solve the problems and all you know i say that there is no perfect believer in the world i haven't seen one you know when we look at uh, people from distance we may think like that but you uh, know when we come closer to god after many years of christian life we understand how weak we are how much failures are there in our life we understand but god is an expert in dealing with failing people so i want to encourage you if you are failed it is not an end of your christian life god can deal with you help you encourage you, you no know, peter the <laughs> more blunders he committed than jona okay jona when uh, people question him he was very clear about his faith and all and he was very bold to say about his god everything was there but uh, peter what did he do he started cursing denying i don't know that man okay what are you talking he started cursing now when we were in the bible school when uh, that was taught you know uh, see the teacher said a fisherman is cursing you know it, uh, you think about his background and his culture and all and probably all the bad languages also might have come out what or it is what happened jesus went after that man where exactly he was and he went there to help him he went there with breakfast he went there to talk to him and bring him back okay i tell you if somebody else was in jesus place what would have been the reaction you would have hired him first hmm? what kind of man you are 
Three and a half years you are with me. You work with me. You have seen and you have heard what I was doing. I was saying and all these things. What did you say about me? What kind of man you are? No, nothing of that. So God is an expert in dealing with failing people. That's why P.T. Varis is standing here. Not because I am a perfect man. My God is very good in, I am a specialized in dealing with failing people. People with shortcomings and weakness. But when God confronts us, what should we do? I am sorry, Lord. I made this mistake. I should not have. I should not have behaved like that. I should not have spoken like that. I said to the Lord several times. Okay, that's important. Okay. So today I will close here and the rest of the things, God willing, we will see another time. And uh, so what Jonah wants to teach us, okay, from his own life, that is what we have seen. Okay. So I said, you know, I do studies. Uh, without opening Bible. Suppose I am sitting in a place where I cannot, uh, some, sometimes it happens in the train or plane, uh, you know, probably Bible is in the bag and uh, I just want to spend time profitably. I will go to this kind of portions, you know. Uh, probably I may not get time to say how I study Philippines. I'll just give you Philippians. Uh, there are four key verses. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 21. For me to live is Christ and to die is day. That is the key verse in chapter 1. And uh, the question is what for you live? What for you live? What for I live? So Paul says, for me to live is Christ. I live for Christ. That is chapter 1. And all what is said in that chapter is going around this key verse. Key verse. Chapter 2, Christ is my example. Okay, Christ is my example. Chapter 2, verse 5, I think. Let this mind be in me, which was in Christ Jesus. Christ is my example. I follow Christ. There we read about four people. Okay. Uh, Paul, Timothy, Epaphras. Okay. And Christ. Four men. Okay. Chapter 2. Chapter 3. Uh, I leave what is behind and uh, I aim at things which are ahead of me so that I may reach Christ. Christ is my goal. I want to go and meet Christ. <clears throat> this is a race. Christ is my goal. Okay, that is chapter 3. Okay. Chapter 4. I can do all three things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ is my strength. And then, you know, just then you are able to, little bit Bible knowledge, you can remember many things in that chapter. So that is the way you can study Bible. Okay. Bible is not there with you, but uh, you can bring some of these uh, outlines of Bible in your mind and you can think about it. So may the Lord help us by looking into this book of Jonah and you have seen the, the, the consequence of disobedience and uh, repent and uh, returning to the Lord. Then chapter 3, cooperating with God and become a blessing to people. And fourthly, unable to cooperate with God and unable to understand uh, the mind of God, the pain of God, the sorrow of God's heart. That is uh, Jonah's life. May the Lord help each one of us. Shall we pray? God our Father, thank you for this Lord's Day morning.